Hey guys, welcome back, and let's continue tearing into this E46. First thing we're going to remove is the flywheel assembly, and it's held on by three bolts at the back there, and there's 17 mil. Same as the last part we took off, when you try and turn these, the whole assembly spins. So how I got the last bit off, I put a large flathead screwdriver, rested it there, and jammed it up against there. So when I turned it, obviously the whole thing couldn't spin. With this, you've got two little holes there. So and drive them through and that should lock these open. In the right side, the engine bay, passenger side, you've got this cover, and in here is the ECU. It's a 5mm Allen key, and there's four of them. Once you're in here, you'll see there's two in there, the blue one, and you've got the silver one. So I'm going to take the silver one out, and there'll be five plugs. It. So the reason for removing the ECU is the factory ECUs have, um, it's like an EWS system built into them. So for example with this now, it doesn't run since it's got you because I disconnected the battery to save the charge in it and it thinks it's having a battery changed. So then you need to plug the car into a computer tell it it's having a battery change before it'll start again. It's like a safety feature, which is annoying for, you know, for the purpose I want to use it for anyway. So there's a company on eBay. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Basically, they do an EWS delete. You can tell them any mods that you've done to the car, whether it be, you know, DCAT, um, different inlet manifold, air filter, light and flywheel. Um, the main things I'm doing when I send this away is raise the rev limit a bit. Um, I've had it done on my compact and that's raised to 7002. Um, delete the EWS uh, and that's mainly it really because I'm not going too mad with this because like I said it's literally a Super basic beginner's car. Right, obviously, this won't pass an MOT. It's literally trashed. Get these off. Yeah. 
these were loosely held on as pretty much one bolt from the previous owner. Um, I have done a video on removing wings, but it was an actual tutorial. So if you want to find out how to get these off, you've got one, two, got five Torx bolts on top. When you open the door, there's another two bolts. Uh, they're ten mil. So undo those two. And then you'll have another two on the underside of there, of the wing, and they're 10 mil as well. There's a little clip there, just pops out of that. Um, the only other thing that will be attached is the indicator. see the state of them and the other side is exactly the same. In the last video we haven't done this arch liner from the underside so normally there's another two bolts here going into the wing. This auto shifter, so we'll see what we need in that. And on the underside here, there's a series of little cables attached to it. They will just pull, pull apart. The, the light switch cables, not the lights, the windows. Normally holding that on you've got two screws there which go into this but for some reason they've already off. Well, it looks like we're gonna to have to remove this section first. Yeah and holding that in screws there and there. things cigarette lighter get that out and what's that gone right this exposes this assembly here Torques here, two at the front. There's one tucked into the back down there. So it's a T30 Torx bit. is to remove the brake pedal because obviously that needs to go and it comes with a new
clutch assembly. So you need to remove all this plastic trim. There's a small trim clip there, a little screw right at the back there, and there's a couple of Phillips screws around the place. So we're going to start getting into this. Diagnostics port is attached as well. Oh, yeah. So, one of these weird clips. Go open that up, and then lift out. Right, and that exposes the brake pedal. And there's three bolts holding it in, and there's one brake switch. Sensor, which you need to undo. Obviously, that's the brake pedal. Got two, two there. the brake switch sensor. That's the bracket. The sensor. The old pedal. To get this out, there's two little clips for the finder. These things. You could uh, fold that up in that position, and you put a flat head in in there. Then pop it, and it comes off. And there's two of them, and that allows you to pull this away. And then finally, you can remove that. So with all that out, just waiting now on on the parts that I've ordered to start actually putting things back together right with this diff we're going to check the ratio you can put marks each side here turn that a full two rotations and then you can roughly work out if it's you know 3.5 4 from that Obviously the easiest way to do it is take the back plate off and it should actually say on the diff itself. These are all the same, all the same length, but when I take things off like this, 
I set them out on the floor as they come out. So it's just a good reference then when you come to put it back together. You, if they are different lengths, you know where they go. Right. thought. Right. If you haven't seen inside one of these before, that's what she looks like. And what they do, when they weld these, you've got two options. You can you can weld them, obviously it's a really cheap way to do it. You normally cut a square, well, rectangle plate, drop it in there, weld all them inner gears together. And then you can pull it up and do what you want. There's various different ways of doing it. Or you can buy an actual LSD, so you change all the internals here for a limited slip differential. Um, they're a fair bit of money, um, you know, you can easily £1,000, that's £700 to £1,000, or you can weld it, if you can weld it yourself, obviously it's not going to cost you much, but even if you take it somewhere like I've done on the compact, uh, it was £50, so it's not the end of the world, and it makes a world of difference when you're on track. That's it for this one. Waiting on a few parts. I picked up a manual gearbox for this. Just waiting on that to be delivered. Uh, I'm not sure whether to go single mass or dual mass flywheel. Um, so I'm just looking at conversion kits and things like that at the moment. A uh, bit of an update on this. Uh, the One of the exhaust tips has fallen off. So I'm going to get two new tips put on it, obviously when uh, the lockdown's lifted so I can actually go and, and do it and I'll also, on the drift day, um, clipped one of the little curbs so the tracking's out a bit so once those two things are sorted, this thing's ready to go um, I have got a Santa Pod drift day booked, it was booked for last year um, but obviously with Covid, with the lockdown coming back in again uh, they've credited me so I just gotta wait for them to open up but things are looking like they're getting back to normal ish in England at least I know three sisters have put dates out for track days so it shouldn't be too long before Santa Pod and the rest of them start back up so fingers crossed we can get some better content for the channel as soon as we can get back drifting thanks for watching Catch you on the next one.